What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be installing a Switch Pro system into this 2021 4Runner. And the Switch Pro system, we've got it kind of mounted up already and I'll explain what all this is in a little bit. Um, but this is technically the Switch Pro system which will wire into this eight panel switch right here. And basically what this is for me, it's just something to connect all of my LED bars that are going to be going into this car. Um, but because Toyota from factory does a terrible job um, in allowing slots basically to put the light switch in, they only give you two. And so basically you max out your lights in the inside at two. But with this system, it allows you to put up to eight different light switches. Um, it comes with some controllable and customizable stickers that go onto this as well. Basically just help you organize everything. Um, but getting into the actual mount, I chose to go with a company, it's a very small company called SD Off-Road Mount, which I'll link below. And the reason why I went with them versus Power Tray, which is probably the most popular tray to organize all your stuff with, is because on the 2020 and up 400s, they relocated this relay fuse box right here. And with the Power Trays, you would have to relocate this box to over here because they don't cut out a hole for the fuse box. But this small company um, called SD Off-Road, they mount it perfectly, cut out this big hole to where this relay fuse just sits right in and it looks very nice and clean. But getting into kind of this whole thing going on, we had some audio issues earlier, so we already did a bunch of this, but it's all very simple. We've got our terminal block right here. We've got our fuse relay box, our bus bar, and then our circuit breaker right here. Basically all this is just screwed in. It's all you got pre-drilled holes into each section. Um, so not really a whole lot that you guys didn't miss on explaining. Um, this is where all your power will connect to um, for any sort of light or anything you wanna put onto here. Your ground will connect into the bus bar just basically keeps it all nice and clean and only one big wire has to run through the firewall instead of sticking every single light. If you wanna put on a new light bar, you have to stick a different wire through the firewall. But now with this system, you'll have to do it once and then everything else just connects to this system right here. All right, so now we're actually gonna get into some of the hard stuff. Again, we just drilled, or not drilled, screwed all these things into this mount that we got. Now we start getting into all of these wires. I know it looks, to me it looks like a big mess because we don't really know what we're doing. We're just kind of tackling this and trying to see if we can um, get it done, but basically we don't really know what we're doing. Most of the videos that I post are basically detailed, installed, step-by-step, -step, kind of showing you guys how to do everything, but I don't know all the technical terms for all of this stuff. So this is kind of just gonna be a vlog type of video, not really showing the in-depth details, um, but more just the process of us installing it because we can't really explain it. But this basically connects into our Switch Pro system, and we've got a ton of different wires that will connect into this terminal block right here. The first four terminal blocks right here are a lower power than the last four. Um, so whenever you're setting it up, one wire will go to the first four and then double wires will be going to the last four just because it is a higher voltage and amp back on these four compared to the top four. So we've got this right here. Um, the first color is going to be brown. And so looking here, it's not a whole far way to travel to here. Um, so we're gonna have to be cutting the wire. We're gonna leave a lot more room because I'd rather cut it long than way too short and then we're kind of screwed for the rest of the video. But we're gonna cut it right here on this wire because this will connect into this top part of the terminal block right here. So let's cut it, hopefully nothing goes wrong. <laughs> All right, so we've test fit this first brown wire just to make sure that it fits. We went ahead and went through and marked each wire um, so we know where exactly to cut it. I know it fits into that terminal block over there. So that's probably the next step is just cutting and then taking this 
heat shrink wrap and putting it over the wire connector um, just from a safety perspective to make sure no sort of water can get into any of these wires up here. So that's the next step in this whole process. No. Next one, please. Where are we on? No, we're to cut it. So you go to the lunge. Yeah. Might as well, whenever you start crimping, I start cutting them. Yeah. I mean, this is easy. Just got to follow the little black line. You know how to cut? Let's just set out. You know how to set out, right? I'm a mechanic, dog. Set out, right? Yeah, let's head out. Okay. Like this, huh? Yeah. Like this, right? What? Like this. Yeah. I'm a mechanic, dog. Good job, dog, <laughs> dog. Chill, dude. Right there, huh? Yeah. Find the money. Woo! It's light. Don't worry about it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two. Taking a little dinner break, eating no better dinner than on the engine bay, right? Got that Steven special. Show him what's up. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So while I'm getting all these touch-ups, looking really nice as we go on. Still got three more wires of Tampa wire doing this. Pete's inside the engine bay, taking off that relay fuse bolt right there because we're going to be using that, one of those holes, to mount the Switch Pro into the engine bay. See that hole right next to his hand right there? That's the other hole that we'll be mounting into. So we're just getting the engine bay prepped to mount this switch inside the engine. All right, so we got all of these first wires lined up and put into the terminal block right here. As we can see, it's all in order from brown, red, orange, yellow, double green, double blues, double purple, and then double gray slash white. Next step is going to be mounting this entire thing into the engine block over there. I'm about leaning it up like that and then going in and then coming back. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is that mounted in that manner? I don't know how you're supposed to screw in this with this being there. I mean, I don't think you would need that hook if it's already screwed in. All right, so we ran into a little bit of a hiccup. Whenever you've got these two drill or these two holes, there's a little hook that goes into that second hole back there that kind of just clips into, but we just bent, bent it and kind of chopped it off. Bent it at a 90 degree angle because the bolt won't be able to fit into that hole if it wasn't cut. So that's where we're at. About to mount this thing into the engine bay and get it all wrapped up. All right, so we finally got it all mounted in here. This is very hard to film because we've been using basically two people the entire time. Got it all bolted up onto the firewall here. We've also got an additional bracket. You can see a little bit right there that will connect down into here. And you can see that top bolt right there is what connects into this additional brace right there. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but that is where we're at. We still got a bunch of power wires and all that stuff to connect. Next step, I believe, is just running it all through that firewall grommet right there inside the engine bay. I'm mean, getting this thing some power. <laughs> it's getting a little late. You already know we gotta break out the Red Bull. Make sure staying all hydrated. So we're kind of stuck with these three wires that are left. We've got the light blue, the pink, and the white wires. So with these three wires right here, this blue one is the only one that's going to be traveling through that um, firewall back there with this big long switch as well, which will connect into the actual eight panel thing inside. But yeah, this blue one right now is gonna be the only one that comes through. This pink one, from what I understand, it's kind of just a useless um, piece. You can, it's called a trigger wire, which I don't really make sense to me, but that's what it's used for. Some people will tap this white into their lights, um, but I'll keep you guys updated on what we do with both the white and the pink wires. See it?
it is. You see the box? Yeah, I see it. Grab it. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> God, Lee, come on. Can you get it? Can, hold on, where? It's good. Let me see. You'll see it's connected to the, I don't know if you're, it's through? Watch out, let me see. Bro, I'm telling you, I see the red. I was yanking on it. And then it should be able to come through easily. So we got the screwdriver right there and that firewall kind of punctured through there. Pete's down here trying to take the tape off so that way we can get the screwdriver out of there and just have the wires up through here. Yeah. All right, so we've got both of these wires in through the firewall we got this piece unclipped up here there's just a couple of different wires back here um, that include like your mirrors your dimmers and some auto lights um, so we're going to be feeding this wire this connector that connects into this switch panel right here and um, just getting this connected um, i think we're going to take this off and kind of do some pre-drilling stuff so this will sit right in here like that um, so yeah let's get right into it all right, so it is the next day. I got defeated last night. I probably worked on this thing for way too long. It's, it shouldn't take that long, but for some reason, like I said, I, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I am trying to install stuff on my own, try to save a little bit of money. Um, so I think we're super close. We're currently driving to AutoZone because the last blue wire that, what from what I see, a lot of people have issues with because they don't really know where to tap it into. Um, I think you tap it into um, the power slash outlet fuse. Um, it needs to be tapped into a 12 volt um, fuse that turns on on ignition. Um, and so with that, I took out the fuse that's in that right now and it won't fit into the add fuse that the Switch Pro company sent me. So we're going to get a longer um, 15 amp fuse to put into the add fuse which will then connect up into um, the fuse box right here by your driving pedals. I think that's it. I'll show everything when we get back into the engine bay and I'll show you where everything's wired up to. We put all the power cables, all the ground cables. We think we've got everything set up correctly. I believe this is the last step, but I will keep you guys updated. We have officially done it, guys. 10 hours later, I kid you not, probably working on it. We have power lit up on this Switch Pro. If you click on this bottom button, which is the Switch 8, you press it on, we can see that the light bar has finally turned on now. But that being said, I've still got to finish up the installation video on that light bar, which I would get to you guys because um, we filmed the first part of it. But anyway, back to here. This thing's finally lit up and ready to put some stickers on it. Um, we'll probably put on this uh, light bar sticker. That's probably the best one that I've found out of them just to help coordinate which sticker goes to which switch in here. But that is it. Let me turn the car off and I'll show you guys kind of the final wiring that we did here. So opening up here, we ran power. See, we've got two power cables. I had to cut a little bit of this so we could fit all of it. Two power cables, one to the circuit breaker right there and then one to the actual Switch Pro. We've got ground from the fuse box to the bus bar and then ground from 
bus bar to battery. Also the black wire from this big old mess is ground to this firewall right here. And I think that's it. The uh, blue wire, we did figure it out. I tapped it into, with this being a 2021 full runner, we tapped it into this bottom one that says P slash outlet, that second from the right um, with the 15 amp. So I went to AutoZone and bought the 15 amp um, fuse, tapped it into the add a fuse and it works. Um, so that is going to wrap up today's video. Um, this is a big mess and a lot of people, the videos make it seem like it's a lot easier than it is. And it might be from what, um, than what easier than what I'm doing. Um, and then how I did it because this was very hard for me to do for some reason and it just seems like it seemed like everything was going wrong nothing was fitting um, but we finally got it figured out so I'm not exactly sure what all we got filmed in this entire thing um, most of the time me and Peter were kind of working together so it's a little bit hard to film what both of us were doing because one of us was doing one thing Peter's doing another thing so it's really hard to film um, but I tried to film a little bit of this, um, but this is the Switch Pro system with the mount from SD Off-Road Mount. It looks really clean. I'm really glad I went with his setup. Um, Derek's his name from SD Off-Road Mount. But that is going to wrap up the video. I hope everything got explained well. If you guys have any questions, comment them down below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Please hit that subscribe button and that like button and I will see you guys in the next one.